and spray. Hey everybody, I'm Ryan McCaffrey with IGN. We are up here at 343 Industries talking with Kynan Pearson, the lead multiplayer level designer on Halo 4. Kynan, welcome. Thanks for having me. We are going to check out all 10 Halo 4 multiplayer maps. Um, so be sure to click over to all of them on IGN. Which one are we going to take a look at right now? All right, so right now we're going to take a look at Exile. Exile is a large-scale vehicular map. Um, it's cylindrical. It's a donut, effectively, uh, with a lot of reinforceable areas on the outside and then some structures that cut through the middle for some shortcuts and routes and, and, and base defense. Uh, this map, fictionally, is a crash site where they reinforced a makeshift base out of the materials that uh, were provided by the crash debris and everything of the ship. They kind of had to reinforce that, that area to survive. All right, so as I was talking about before, getting into the vehicle stuff, um, a donut is basically a description of a map that has a an area that goes around the map mm -hmm. completely. So if you look at the shape of a donut, there's a hole in the middle. This isn't really a hole, just in the description of the route. Um, you're blocked off from the center in terms of your, your vehicle pathing. So you can just clean drive around the outer edge of the path. Uh, back and forth, it creates a nice loop. Um, there's multiple routes that you take within the donut, but as you can see, I can make it from one end of the map to the other. Uh, I can turn around and go the other way, and there's just really nice vehicle combat areas. It makes vehicles fun to drive, you're not running into stuff constantly, but there's plenty of areas for, for uh, ground units to kind of spring surprise attacks on the players that are going around and, and I stuff. see a lot of opportunity here to uh, just load up a gunner in the Warthog and just start, start doing donuts around <laughs> the donut uh, to take out various enemies. Absolutely. So uh, all maps, whenever you're going through the design process, you want to make sure, because it's easy to cut through the center of a map to get from point A to point B, you try and build maps outside in so that the outer edges of the map are still as usable as the center of the map. They're reinforceable. So if you're going around on the outer edge of the map, there's reason for you to do that. Right. You can still engage people. There's some power positions that you can hold within the different structures. So we've got some turrets out here. Um, but as you can see, just any of these areas, like if, if somebody is over here and they're exposed out in the middle, it's actually, even though it takes a lot longer to make it around the map, uh, it's a valid strategy to use the outer area of the map. And that's one of the things that Halo maps have done uh, really well. Yeah, you don't want to build a multiplayer map and then have people only use half or two thirds of it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And if you, if you make the areas on the outside of the map invalid, then people will just cut through the middle and they'll always take the, the shortest route. So this is just showing that we've got quick access routes to get from outer edges into the center um, so that even if you, you go around the outside and you're, you're using cover and, and uh, going for objective points, that there's still great reason to go outer in rather than um, having to worry about So there shortcuts. is a Banshee. We haven't seen too many of them by default in the multiplayer maps. You explained why in another, in another of, our, of our map videos. But here we have one, and uh, it's got all its same bag of tricks as it's always had, right? Absolutely. You can still do dodges, you can do your uh, flips, and then you can reorient yourself. You have uh, your standard weaponry, you've also got banshee bombs, so you can deliver some devastating damage, uh, and you can boost. So you can splatter ground units, you can get around the map fairly easily. And I um, trust it's still possible if. Uh, the driver gets close enough and you've got a skilled enough player on foot to board a Banshee. Absolutely. So there are some certain choke points that the Banshee uh, needs to kind of, you know, you don't have to go through this, but people tend to. So we give lots of opportunities to board the Banshee. Plus, uh, you can have a plasma pistol in your default loadout. So at any given time, Just bring the Banshee is going down, you can EMP it, run over, and take it. Now, do you find when you're designing a large-scale multiplayer map like this, is it harder or easier to do than one of the smaller or mid-sized maps? Um, a lot of times the larger maps, because they have to support vehicles and ground units, are more difficult in terms of their layouts. Because you have to make it valid for players to do both things. Right. And uh, when you're building a, a 
path in terms of a vehicle route or whatever. You need to make it comfortable for the vehicle to turn around, do donuts, and engage people. But those areas still have to feel good at the scale of the player if they're on foot and trying to get away from vehicles. You don't want the map to feel empty. That's another one of the things where, um, because we have sprint by default, you're actually able to get around the map fairly easily. And uh, just as Banshee defense right now, uh, we have the Gosshog, so you Excellent. can take the Banshee out fairly easily uh, as long as you've got some, some good aim and uh, you're not a sitting duck for the Banshee Bomb. Now how does, on paper, how does this map start when you sit down with it? Does it start with the donut and you think, okay, big, big scale map, I want to ring around it so, you, so the vehicles can get around and then build from there? Where, where's the, uh, how's the creative process on this? Yeah, so typically, uh, and for this map specifically, uh, the outer routes and the, the vehicle routes are, are set very early on. So you know what space uh, the map takes up in terms of, of how long it takes a vehicle to make it around and, and what uh, area feels good for just driving. Um, and then it's kind of like spacing out things like the amount of time that it takes to run from one side to the other on foot to make sure that you know, you're, you're not fully exposed to long range weapons and that there's the lines of sight are appropriate so that if I'm running around on foot, as you can see, I can defend myself from people shooting long range within certain areas so that I can make my way across the map into uh, the center area. The next is, is what it takes to, to define the scale of the structure that goes through the center area. And you want this to feel, feel great and feel good and take enough time so that it's not, um, not a way to completely shortcut the routing of the map for the vehicles and make those um, obsolete. So, what uh, what game types are are well suited to this? Obviously, uh, bigger team things, but um, you know, is capture the, is this is this going to be Halo 4's go to capture the flag map, for instance? Um, this is actually really good for capture the flag and uh, for a BTB map. Um, it's it's great for objective types. Dominion's one that functions really well on here, but also um, Flood is, is really good on this map, even though it's a large scale map. Um, there's, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with Flood. Um, Dominion and Capture the Flag are, are all well supported, but it's, it's a favorite in the studio for just simple uh, BTB uh, Slayer. Team Slayer. How about on the armor ability side? I'm thinking maybe uh, the thrust pack could be useful here to just do some quick dodging when you're out in the open field, maybe duck out of the way of an oncoming warthog. Yeah, regen field is actually really good here as well as um, shield and thruster pack. So shield is great because you can be on the outer edges of the map if somebody's trying to engage you, then you can kind of pop your shield out and duck around a corner. Um, Regen field as well because you've got big groups running around so you can set up some reinforced areas up on these decks so you can fire down and, and dodge around and make sure that whenever uh, you're taking damage from people as they're running around that you're able to recover some, some health. Because of course because the regen field in Halo 4 will actually heal your teammates as well, correct? Anybody that's inside it? Yep. So that's, that's a positive one to use in, uh, in this map. Now I've been lucky enough to play this map for a, for a previous bit of Halo 4 coverage, which you can of course find on IGN. Um, and in that in that session, I remember a Scorpion tank popping up. Is it in here by default, or is it, does it just will it show up based on various custom or, or certain game types? Yeah, uh, Scorpion is in here by default. Um, I will run to it now. Um, but again, all the it. game modes have their own um, settings, so. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have, you know, a scorpion available on something like Flood. <laughs> right. <laughs> but for the appropriate game types, objective game types and whatnot, you have the tank. Um, the tank is, is great in this map and it's another power vehicle that you have to contend with. But again, because you have things like the uh, Gosshog and the Banshee, as well as plasma pistols, uh, you have to have a coordinated team to be able to make sure that it's safe. Of course, the Scorpion's been a favorite going back to Halo 1 multiplayer. Is this the only one of the 10 maps that has a Scorpion in it by default? Um, there, Scorpions are available in some of the other uh, maps and mode types, but this one I believe might be uh, one of the only Scorpions supported uh, by default maps. Yeah. So as you're as you're designing this, you know you want a big map with the ring around it, with, so vehicles can get around. Um, you know, do you do you definitely before you even sketch something out? Do you do you start with a list of okay, I want a map that 
I can drive a Warthog, Ghost, and Scorpion around in, or does it start with, oh, let's, let's start with the Warthogs and see how it goes, and then do you add the other vehicles one by one? Um, a lot of times you'll, like we have an expanded sandbox, so we have a lot of uh, vehicles and we've introduced some new vehicles. So typically we'll try and figure out the map scales first and then see which vehicles work best on the maps and then define a nice spread so that we get enough usage out of the vehicles and give people enough opportunities to, to play with their, their favorite vehicles. So it kind of has to do with the overall package and not necessarily the specific details, though we test very heavily to make sure that everything works really well. I'm and so, curious, uh, so the Scorpion's in here by default, which of course we all love, why, for instance, as you're, as you're designing this map, you think, okay, we're gonna put a Scorpion in here by default. Uh, why the Scorpion over, say, the rate? Um, Again, it, it comes down to variety. Um, we have you know, maps that highlight the Wraith, um, and really it's which vehicle works best in the scenario and doesn't end up being a dominant factor during the, the testing process. Right. So the Scorpion requires a different scale um, than the, the Wraith does in terms of map production because the Scorpion kind of has to have a larger area for turning around because right. it's a longer vehicle. Um, so something like the Wraith, while it may totally function in this map and be positive, um, we might not use it by default just because uh, we wanted to highlight the tank or that the tank worked out really well for a certain mode. Has there been any significant change to this map since what, from when you guys first uh, built it and had it playable to what's in the box? Yeah, absolutely. One of the first iterations of the map um, had the uh, the crashed vehicle right in the center of the map and it actually had a crashed Covenant ship. So that, that played a, a more significant part fictionally as well as layout. Um, and just in terms of uh, some of the, the structures and everything, they've, they've evolved massively from the first iteration of the, the level. Well, I think that's uh, all the excellent highlights from Exile. We're gonna move on, take a look at some other maps for all 10 map overviews for Halo 4. Be sure to keep it locked right here to IGN.